Namaskar, Nileshok here, and bringing you part two of this session on questions and answers. And I added objections and responses with Nileshok. Part two. Today, someone asked me a question, actually a two-part question you can say. What do you think about Younger Dryas event? That is to say, what do I think about the Younger Dryas event? And part two, how does this Younger Dryas event tie up with Ramayan and Mahabharat timelines? The Mahabharat happened in the sixth millennium BC, 5561 BC. Ramayana occurred in 13th millennium BC, 12,209 BC, and uh, approximate period for Rugveda runs from 6th millennium BC, the latest, uh, the last portion, the latest portions of Rugveda, all the way into deep antiquity. We don't know how far back. The Hydrology evidence, specifically with respect to Saraswati and other rivers such as Yamuna and Satluj, and uh, geology evidence, geophysics evidence, geochemistry evidence, morphodynamics of rivers evidence, tells us that the oldest portions of Rugveda appear to be definitely older than 22,000 BCE, which is to say more than 24,000 years ago. And this has been validated by multiple very rich empirical evidence from multiple different disciplines of hard sciences. So now for the context of Younger Dryas, the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. What you are seeing is the graph of temperature fluctuations into the ice cores of Greenland. So look at the relative change of this graph, okay? Do not focus on the absolute temperatures on the y-axis, okay, here. They are into negative 55. So minus 55, minus 50, minus 45, minus 40, and so on. These are the temperatures of Greenland ice cores, okay? Taken over a time and correlated with the timeline. We will not go into the technical aspects of how this is done. The important portion for our discussion is to know the relative temperature. If it goes above, that's high temperature. If it goes below, that's a low temperature on the y-axis. And the x-axis is the axis of time. We are starting here at the right corner with a zero BP, which is kind of think of it for simplicity as now. Okay, and then going backwards. So when we go to this 5,000, so this is 5,000, by the way, KYA, okay, years ago, that YA, and K is like a 4,000. So 5,000 years ago is same as what? Approximately 3,000 BC. 7,000 years ago would be what? Approximately 5,000 BC and so on, okay? So if you want to just quickly make a rough calculation, so 15,000 years ago, is same as 13,000 BCE, right? You have to subtract uh, 2,000 years. In this picture, this is the area of a Younger Dryas. But just to understand uh, why such a big deal about Younger Dryas, let's go even further back in antiquity. Notice something what is happening after 13,000 BCE or 15,000 years ago, we will not again go into what happened. There are multiple theories why there was a sudden increase in temperature. There are multiple theories why there was a sudden decrease in temperature, which is identified with this Younger Dryas. So we are not going to look at the causes. We are just going to look at the outcome. So whatever that happened, and you, know, you can notice some of the names listed here, the temperature did increase. And now this is only an indicator. What is happening to Greenland ice cores is an indicator for what is happening in the rest of the world. Nobody should think that in the rest of the world, specifically India, the temperatures were like minus 35, minus 40. But what it means is that 
if the Greenland ice cores are showing increase in temperature, then there was an increase in temperature on the relative scales in India or many other parts of the world. And if the temperature was going down, then there were also cooler periods in other parts of the world, like say, for example, India. But that is not to say that Indians were shivering with cold and they, it was an inhabitable land. No, not, that is not the case. It was actually wonderful times, okay? Pleasant times, much more pleasant than the temperatures that we experience in India right now. Younger trials refers to sudden decrease in the temperatures after the temperatures had gone up, then they stayed there for a certain time and then they came up and now more or less where we are for last 10,000 years or so. Against this context, so let's put some numbers there. So Younger Dryas is known as a period defined as sometime from 12,900 BP before present to 11,000, sorry, 11.7, which is 11,700 BP before present. 11,000 to 9,700 BC is our Younger Dryas. Against this, let us see where does the Mahabharata and Ramayana fit. Before that, let's just go all the way beyond what is shown on the graph. That's known as LGM. So somewhere way back there, the, the glacial maximum, which is to say another colder period there, okay, had began a long time ago. We will not even go how far back it began, but definitely the last glacial maximum, which is to say the coldest time, so to say, occurred sometime during 27,000 through 24,000 BP, which is what, 25,000 BCE to 22,000 BCE. That is the last glacial maximum. That is when in the recent history of our world, our earth, the sea levels were at their lowest. And that's when some of the possible myths of Augusta drinking the ocean, or Bruhadrat noticing that the oceans are drying up and the stars are moving and so on and so forth, they would refer to this time period of LGM or before that, because the ocean levels were going down for a significantly longer time. Against this backdrop, the Mahabharata war that happened 7,500 years ago can be shown to be where we have marked it. Okay, and Ramayan is just before the Younger Dryas. Interestingly, notice the Ramayan time as if it happens that it was a pleasant time. Okay, the temperature there at this one peak here, known as uh, Bulling Alarod time period, you know, defined based on the scientist who collected data during this time for the warming up of uh, our planet. This area where the temperature is high, almost comparable to what we have here. And actually that exactly is in the vicinity or right at the timing of Ramayana. It is known as an astronomy event or rather series of events called RSB, Rohini Shakata Bhed. Something very fascinating, even though this may be a simple correlation without any causation, but something very fascinating because human mind tends to connect certain events even when there is no causality. I have taken a cutout from the sky. What you are seeing in the picture is this ecliptic of the sun, which is to say the sun's reference path around the earth as seen from the earth. That's where we see sun going around in the sky. And the specific area that I have copied is the area of Nakshatra, Krutika and Rohini. So Krutika is in this bottom right-hand corner in the picture and Rohini is at the top left-hand corner specifically these five stars. So one, two, three, four, and five. These five stars create a shape, V-shape like this, and it's called the Shakata. 
I don't know how many of you have seen this, but if you have seen uh, the old time, uh, I don't know what are the different names that are used, but katara or things like that, which is to say a small cart may be pulled by one horse or one uh, bull or something like this. Okay, so you may just barely sit into it, put some stuff, you know, it has the shape like auto rickshaw kind of V shape, and it has been pulled by a horse or a, or a bull or a donkey. So that is known as the shakata, which essentially means like a vehicle, okay, or something that you can use to carry stuff. And what is then Rohini Shakata Bhed? We know what the Shakata of a Rohini is. And it so happens that if you look at certain planets, you will find that they never ever enter this shakata of Rohini. Now, what is that shakata again? From Rohini all the way to this fifth star called Garga. Okay. So as the planets go around the earth along this ecliptic, they can go on both sides of it, depending on their orbit. But some planets will simply never enter anywhere inside this shakat. So a planet may just simply come and go by like this or may go by like this, but it will not come to the left of this garg, which is same as to the south of the gargatara. What are these planets? That's Venus, Mercury, Jupiter. We are not going to look at the other planets which cannot be seen with a naked eye, such as Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Sun, of course, won't do it because Sun is going to follow this ecliptic. So we are left with Moon. And because the Rohini Shakata Bhed refers to comets, I'm including that. So comets have their own trajectory. They, can, uh, they don't have to follow the ecliptic. They can go anywhere. So comets, in principle, can come inside the Shakat. And that's what the Rohini Shakata Bed mentions it. Moon. Now, moon's deviation from the ecliptic is what? About four or five degrees on both sides. So moon can easily come on this side and at other times it will be on the other side. So moon will do it. Comets will do it. What is interesting is that Indian astronomy text tell us that even Mars and Saturn does it, or Mars and Saturn can do it, they have done it. What is interesting is that such a phenomenon of Mars doing Rohini Shakata Bhed or Saturn doing Rohini Shakata Bhed has not been observed in last 1000 years, 2000 years, 3000 years, 4000 years, 5000 years, and even longer. Interestingly, that phenomenon is very well discussed in ancient Indian astronomy books. Discuss this. Surya Siddhanta has a mention of it. But what is interesting is that now that we have much more knowledge of astronomy through Hubble telescope and modern astronomy of last 500, 600 years, we can see, we can test if it is ever possible for Mars or Saturn to do this. Guess what? Before the so-called modern astronomy, especially the space technology where we can send a satellite uh, with a telescope in the space like Hubble telescopes, and it can make some very powerful uh, readings, data collection. Before that, I'm, I'm taking you back to say 130 years plus. A great Indian astronomer, SBD, Shankar Balakrishna Dikshit, manually calculated, okay, by taking into account the whole Indian astronomy, and of course the modern astronomy, because the astronomy parameters keep on changing. So we have to always find ways to calculate these parameters to the best of our ability and build models or refine our models or recalibrate these models from Surya Siddhanta or now from modern astronomy using these uh, parameters, using these constants. 
So whatever was available some 140 years ago, Shankar Bhagavad Dikshit used this and predicted that if this Rohini Shakata Bhed occurred, and again, we are talking specifically on the Mars and Saturn, it is possible only before he said 5,000 BC. So which is to say it is only possible before 7,000 years from today, which is to say it is not possible in the last 7,000 years. Something very fascinating, just as a prediction, guys, OK? And how does that prediction look against the actual data now that we have uh, very precise, or rather I should say more precise data, more accurate and more precise data based on because of Hubble telescope and uh, many such things. How does this prediction compare with what we can see? Something very fascinating. We actually find that what SB Dikshit, Shankar Bhakrishna Dikshit said is indeed true. The way the Rohini Shakata Bhed is described, especially for Mars and Saturn, indeed did not happen any time in the last 7,000 years, as predicted by Shankar Bhakrishna Dikshit. If we go backwards, starting with our time and go backwards, the first event, at least the one that I am aware, and one of uh, my co-researcher, you can say, and a good friend, uh, Ameya Modak, he might have identified one instance, okay, maybe around 5000 BC, but after I have to go and check with him. But based on my research, the first instance of either Mars or Saturn doing Rohini Shakata Bhed occurs about 10 years before the timing of the Mahabharat war. And then if you go in further antiquity, what is interesting is that there are few instances of Mars doing this Rohini Shakata Bhed. But as you approach Younger Dryas, and I think through Younger Dryas, when I say I think, I mean because the data that I have done very exhaustively for last uh, 13,000 years or so, and actually, Ameya Modak has taken it even further. Okay, he has explored the time space going back to I don't know, maybe fifteen thousand, seventeen thousand, possibly up to twenty thousand years. But I'll talk about what I have done and what I remember. So going back to say twelve thousand years, just for simplicity. So this. Rohini Shakata Bed of Mars and Saturn, it begins as predicted by Shankar Bhar Krishna Dikshit only when we go beyond 7,000 years. The first instance that, that is at least I'm aware of happens 10 years before the Mahabharata war, that is in 5571 BC. Mahabharata war happened 10 years after 5561 BC. And then if you go further back in antiquity, so think of this as between this Mahabharata times and going back towards Younger Dryas and actually passing through the Younger Dryas, we do find few instances of both Mars and Saturn doing Rohini Shakata Bed. Just an expanded view of this same timeline. Realize now the x-axis of the time is going from left to right, which is zero is where we are today. And this is, uh, as you go to the right, this is going back in antiquity. Again, if I superimpose the timing of Ramayana, notice, so from the right side, we are coming towards us. The temperature was very low around the world. Suddenly, whatever happened and the temperature peaked in the sense it became much more comfortable, warmer, okay? Similar to ours and still cooler than what we have. And this is the time actually, so 15 and 14, so 14 is right here. So this is the warm time, relatively warmer time you can say, is when Ramayana happened. Again, this is just a coincidence guys, okay? So the way I determine Ramayana time has nothing to do with younger dryers or when the temperature went up or down, absolutely not, okay? And then of course the younger dryers, and as I mentioned, the phenomenon of Rohini Shakata Bhed started just before Younger Dryas. I mean, total number of instances are less than 10 for Mars and Saturn together, doing, they doing Rohini Shakata Bhed. 
but that lasted until the time of Mahabharata war. Okay, so after Ramayana and between Mahabharata, the Rohini Shakata Ved was taking place by Mars and by Saturn. So to answer that question, say that is one interesting event that was happening during that time. And it was considered a, a bad time, at least the way Indian astronomy has connected with Rohini Shakata Bhed and its consequences. So last 7,000 years, there is no Rohini Shakata Bhed. What is interesting is that the beauty of Indian civilization, that memory is retained to this day. And through these 7,000 years, right down to our time, to Ganesh Daivadnya or to Shankar Bala Krishna Dikshit, and it is still preserved in our texts, such as Surya Siddhanta, Varamir talks about it, Ruddha Garga talks about it, and I'm sure there are a few other uh, Indian astronomers who discuss this as well. So with that, I will stop. I will see you again soon in another questions and answer session. Thank you.